So, um, so the next level, and, and you know what I really love about um, understanding the animal kingdom in this way, and understanding frequencies around this in this way, is I see you got to know I see this pattern in everything. Chakra, all of the cat frequencies are here, but it's not just cat frequencies because you can imagine now lion, tiger, <laughs> you know, leopard, cougar, uh, mountain lion, all of this beautiful cat frequency in the solar plexus area. Um, but, it, you know, interestingly, camels are in this frequency as well. Do you have many camels here in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> they are strange creatures, but they, they you'll, you'll understand in a moment when I explain, very special, very, very special, royalty, royalty. And, um, and what is amazing about this frequency is is a frequency of royalty. There's not. It's not an accident that we call the lion the king of the jungle. It's not. Um, it's not an accident that um, the Egyptians revered the cats the way that they did. They they were gods and goddesses. And uh, and it's not an accident that um, you know in the Arab countries the, the camels are are a sign of that as well. It's a great sign of wealth and status. So. The things that these animals show us and the, the, the frequency that cat brings into our life is the understanding of healthy selfishness. So being healthily selfish. We've got a lot of women here who struggles with that. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. 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 It's it's for a lot of, and you know, especially when we do animal communication work or intuitive work, how intuitive are cats? Oh, amazing. And it's because they're in this frequency. And, um, and it's, you know, your intuition doesn't magically only happen in your third eye. It's something that happens in your gut. It's a very primal thing. Because you know, you've got to know, I, everybody can talk to animals. Every, you know, there's people here already talking to animals. And the only reason that I do it as like I'm, do, I'm standing here doing this even is just because my job happens to have put me in a position where every day I engage with animals so I've just practiced it maybe a little bit more um, and it gets better with practice it's a muscle you can you can flex so so when we're teenagers what do we do we reject everything all the old ways so if the dog was the old tribal ways don't go in the forest, the gods will be angry. Follow in your father's footsteps. Eat your greens. Something bad will happen if you don't eat your greens. All of that stuff that we just think is normal and we think there is no, don't go over the mountain, the world ends there. And one day, one naughty little warrior, something happens and one of the naughty little warriors from the tribe gets his cat energy on and says, I am going to go over that mountain. I'm going. I don't give a rat's if you guys are with me or not. I'm trying to censor my language here. <laughs> 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 money in the swear jar otherwise. I'm, I'm practicing my cat energy so the cat would just swear. No. Just um, so I'm going to go over that mountain and I don't care what happens and let the gods be angry with me. And, and I'm just going to go. And if you're not coming that's fine. If you're coming with me that's fine but I'm, we're doing it my way now. So this is that teenage, this is that teenage phase when you can't be told what to do. It's a rebellion. It's a moving away from because all of a sudden the locus of control about what is important moves from others to self, and so it creates a dynamic in. Our, you know, we need all of these different frequencies in our life. We need to be able to access all of these different things to be in balance. So the cat energy just goes off and does what it wants to do. It can be destructive though. One of my earliest experiences, I had cats when I was a little girl. I was a sensitive little girl that talked to animals and my first animals were cats. Uh, yeah. I also happened to really like mice. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. So I had to really resolve, like, what was, like, how could this amazingly spiritual being have this selfish side, have this uh, primal side, have this uh, vicious side? 
and that is a component of what is like in the whole that's got to be healthily in balance um, and, and most of the time we you know we can't just have that right so we see cat characters in movies on TV Who's watched a crime drama with the cop that doesn't play by the rules? Okay, what's the chance he's divorced? <laughs> Got a drinking problem? <laughs> Just has a gut feeling that that's the bad guy and isn't gonna play by the rules to get him, right? So, so that is, that's, that is the cat frequency right there. It's the slightly destructive phase of, you know, side of it, but it can also be a very heroic space. It can be a really heroic space. It can be brave and fierce and um, adventurous. There's a reason the cat's got nine lives, right? Because it's, it goes on those adventures. It goes over the mountain. Sometimes it is the end of the world and sometimes it's not. So, so our teenage years and, and how comfortable we are with rebellion and especially I find that women are drawn to cats as a way of bringing out like their, like their, fem their goddess energy, their, that feminine prowess, that um, being okay with being selfish in a healthy way and being powerful. So, and if you look at even the way that where cats came into the evolution of humanity, and you look at what Egypt represented, you know, the time in Egypt, the development, of it, was there cruelty? Was there dominance? Was there class? Yeah, there was. It was a very feline energy. And, um, and it was, in some ways, a very self-motivated energy. But it was also a very powerful time, a very powerful spiritual time on the planet. So cats are still working with us in this way now. And, and actually utilizing those cat frequencies is really, really great for us. So cats in your life, in some way, they will have their uniqueness, but they'll be working with you on this stuff. They'll be working on this with you. So after we have been through our teenage years, after the warrior has gone over the mountain, and started his own tribe and has done things his way and rejected all the old ways, what happens? What happens at the end of the movie? The sacred marriage. Yeah, so it's like something something starts to change. It's too hard to just look out for yourself all the time. It's too hard to be on your own. It's too hard to uh, be the warrior all the time. The warrior wins the war and marries the princess and becomes the king, okay? So, so when we move into that, we start to look at the heart space and Caroline Miss or Mice, depending on how you say her name, I've heard her say it differently <coughs> herself, I think. Um, she talks about the, the heart chakra and the sacred marriage as well and when she talks about um, the different kinds of uh, holy sacraments that are related to the chakra and the force for me embodies that. And horses, again, came into our world and partnered with humanity um, to, like a marriage, when it's a healthy marriage, because together you can travel further and faster than you can alone. <laughs> so having a partner, having a mirror in your life, having someone that you cannot overpower, there is, there is no power imbalance, all of a sudden we have this amazing mirror. And, and horses for me represent this amazingly because you cannot force a horse. If you think you can, you've got one of those like unhealthy marriages. And when the going gets tough, that horse is not going to jump over that obstacle for you. They're not going to traverse that river for you. They're going to dump you on the trail and run home. <laughs> yeah? But together, and look at what humanity has achieved with horses, with horsepower. They have tilled our fields. They were vital in our evolution with agriculture. Uh, they took us into new territories that were inaccessible. They expanded our world. So there's something about this horse energy 
and I know we've probably got a bunch of horsey ladies here, um, that, you know, there's a reason that your husband is a little bit jealous of your horse, right? <laughs> <laughs> the dog may be the family dog, but the horse is your horse. It's pretty special to even let someone else ride your horse. Yeah. So, so it really is like a marriage and a partnership. And it's um, ultimately, it's something that, because you'll notice that we've moved through these levels, that actually when we get here, when we get into horse stuff, we're talking about the sacred marriage, not just in terms of partnership, but also in terms of um, like a spiritual heart connection, a connection back to ourself. Because the hero's journey and any archetypal journey, and this, all this stuff I'm talking about works with archetypal journeys as well, um, those, those experiences at the end are actually a knowing of self, coming back to your own heart. So, you know, ma you know horses are so magical. When you're like a little girl, like this magical thought of you being able to ride off into the sunset on your own horse. But actually, the reality of working with horses, and those of you that have horses will understand this, is you need to really know yourself. You need to, you need a little, you need, if, if you don't have that bit of cat energy in you, that bit of, nah, we're going to do this now, and I know who I am, and we're, this is where we're going, you, you'll get stuck with your horse. You can't create that safe, loyal tribe if there are trust issues. You're going to have problems with the horse because these levels work together. But what you'll notice is, again, we've gone back into the importance being on others, on being on connection, on being away from the self again. So when I work with animal frequencies, I notice we're moving through this dynamic all the time of self to others, self to others, self to others. It actually it drives our spiritual growth and our spiritual evolution. <laughs> Just trying to think whether there's anything else really important I've got to tell you about horses. Horses hold the heart frequency on the planet. You know, they really, really hold the heart frequency on the planet. They are an amazing, amazing source of spiritual connection, especially for us ladies, I think. I'm sure it's the same for men too. They might just not want to own up to it as much. Um, but I meet ladies every day where their horse is their church. It's like it's their meditation. Their church and their meditation is in the stables with their horse. Yeah. And actually, often it's something that um, I, a lot of people I work with, they will return to horses. At, um, at a time in their life where they're wanting to get back to honouring their passion and what's important to them. A lot of a lot of people leave horses like road as children and move away from that and then come back to it later in life. So, you know, when we look at that horse stuff, we are looking at very, very much in the, in the heart and area, very, very much about um, relationships and the kinds of relationships that are not the same as our tribe, the kinds of relationships we as adults, as grown-ups, the things that we marry ourselves to, the things that we're passionate about, the things that we match up with energetically, the, the, the things that drive us. Where do we want to go? What journey do we want to go on? And that's that's the stuff our horses can talk to us about. So there's, those three foundations are... Um, you know, they represent such important life phases for us. Uh, they represent, I think, such important stuff about the things that we're working through in our life. In, additionally, also, and it's, I only it's a coincidence that horses are expensive because the other thing that comes in that phase of your life is you're looking for more stability and security. You're looking to, um, you know, Barns are expensive to build, paddocks are expensive, horse rugs are expensive, horse shoes are expensive. And, and there is a part of that sacred marriage that is about building your own home, your own kingdom, where you start to want to find security and create structure and organisation. And actually that kind of training is also very important with horses. Very, very much about uh, routine and structure and 
organisation and, you know, this, it, that's why there are a million different training systems for, for courses. Those the systems are part of that as well, yeah? So um, my horses have helped me a huge amount with systems in my life because I reject, I'm like, I want to be all over the place. Systems are not as exciting for me. But you've got to know when you're in a marriage, you've got to have, you, there's got to be balance, right? If you don't like balance it back and forth, if there's not give and take, if you're not putting emotional money into somebody's bank account, you can't, you can only withdraw on it for so long. So that's a really, and the heart, when you look at the way the heart functions and the chambers of the heart, the input and the output, and that all being in balance, and then how we use our hearts to connect with the universe, and is that in balance? There's just, there's so, I could talk about horse stuff with, with the heart energy forever. So, so we've got the three big themes, right? We've got like the, the childhood stuff from the dogs, and the whole, like just trusting of this is the way things are, that very like naive, um, and it's naive and it's and it's beautiful at the same time. There's a there's a loyalty to it, you know. We 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 love our parents sometimes even when they are undeserving of our love. You know, it's one of the hardest struggles that a lot of people deal with is is that they're your family and you love them. And then, how did you move away from that? How did you find yourself? How do you find your self expression? Learn to trust your gut. And then based on that, what kinds of marriages, what kinds of relationships, how, what is the world, what is the kingdom you've created? What are the fields you are tilling? What is the, uh, the quality of the balance and harmony and compromise in your uh, adult relationships? And are you connected to that in your heart? So in addition to all of that stuff, right, then we start to look at a couple of other things around what might the animals in our life be bringing us? So, it, just that little part, can I just check in with you guys? Just that little part, you know, if these animals are consciousness messages about these themes, has anybody, like, already had a little aha about an animal that they've had in their life that maybe, like, matched up with some of that? Can I just get, like, a little, like, a nod or a. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, then what we start to look at and what I look at as a therapist or the themes that I start to see are straight away I know that if we're working with a dog, we're more than likely here. If we're working with a cat, we're here. If we're working with a horse, we're in the sacred marriage stuff. So how then do we get into the nitty gritty of, of what is the uniqueness? What is the unique contract with this animal and us? And so I start to look at uh, symbolically decoding some of the stuff that happens in the behaviour. Who's, who's had behavioural problems with an animal? <laughs> I'll put both my hands up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, a bit of celebration around this. You do have to celebrate it. It's one of the first and best ways that animals communicate with us is with their behaviour. That's coming okay? now. My horse is yeah, 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 yeah. So, so behaviour is a massive part of what goes on. So, a lot of the time, we don't always understand their behaviour, and if we can look at that as one component. So, if this animal represents this part of me, and this is going on, what might that be about? I want to tell you about my little dog Ruth. <laughs> She's an Australian Kelpie. She's probably got a bit of dingo and a bit of whippet in there. or She's like a little pixie of a dog. And when she came into my life, and I, I don't even have time to tell you the story of how she came to my life. You do, life. actually. Oh, I do? Yeah, you can totally tell Oh, that. my gosh. It's a great story. Oh, do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Australia Day. And I was, it was the last Australia day that I was catching the train to work at my retail sales job at the art gallery. I'm on the train and we got to Seaforth train station. You don't know Seaforth train station, that's okay, it's not a key part of the story. But we were at Seaforth train station and a couple of people got on and we have a big like sky show fireworks on Australia day in the city so people were starting to drift in. 